This is San Lorenzo's 106A, and the A is the interesting thing on this because it's an asymmetric layout, and I'm going to explain that to you as we go on board, but I'm going to stop here just for a moment and explain also we've got a high-low platform, which you often get with a style of boat, but we also have a massive garage, and I'm going to show you that from the inside. It really is quite a size. Now, this is very much an owner specification boat. San Lorenzo are very, very big on customization and getting exactly what people want. So you're gonna find on this, this boat is laid out particularly for entertaining and relaxing. So for example, normally this seat would just be this length. This one's been added to, so that we get this lovely lounging area at the back of the boat. And you'll see bits and pieces of owner specifications you go through, but of course, you know, they'll lay these out exactly how you want. Now this is what we're talking about with the asymmetric. This side comes right out to the edge, the, the whole cabin, there's no walkway down this side, the walkway is only on the other side, and that massively extends the interior. If we head on into here, you'll see exactly what I mean. So normally, your side deck would be cutting down here, because it's not got that, you get this, which is just vast, right out to the very edge of the boat on that side. What that means is you've got space to put your dining down along there. Normally on this side of the boat, you have your saloon, and then you have your dining ahead of it, which of course, shortens your saloon. With this, you can take advantage of that extra beam, you can get your dining alongside, makes this area bigger, makes the whole thing a lot more relaxed. Now, more owner specification. They've chosen this bar area here at the back, so we've got an ice maker in here, we've got fridges in here, that kind of stuff. You might choose to extend your seating right to the back instead. Another interesting thing that's been put onto this boat is this corner window. Normally that's just like a moulding that goes back. This has had the window put in and it means you get sort of almost a complete circle of view. Not circle, but you know, a <laughs> semi-circle. Um, these doors, of course, will open all the way out, but also there have been doors added here. So these will open as well and you can make this into a really airy, well-ventilated, well-lit area with a tremendous view. But it just feels spacious and comfortable. Another thing to mention about San Lorenzo is the woodwork because there are massive choices in different colours of wood, but also even down to the degree of the satin or gloss finish. You don't just have simply, you have satin or you have gloss. You have degrees in percentages right the way through from all satin through to all gloss. It's quite remarkable what they'll do. They really will tailor these boats to exactly what you want. Another thing that this owner had is this bench put in along here. So for parties and things, there's always places for people to sit and chat, converse, and again, very much with a the party theme. Look at this massive wine cooler that we've got here, floor to ceiling. We've got TV built in here. We've got this area down here. If I open it in the right place, we'll be able to get into it. So this is all your crockery. It's tucked away and all nicely secured so it doesn't rattle around when you're at sea. And I think that, again, is a hallmark of San Lorenzo in that they are a very beautiful and very pretty boat, but they're also very much designed to be used. And another wonderful thing, not seen this before, when you buy your San Lorenzo, you will find this box in pride of place. And what is in here is the top of the champagne bottle that was broken against the hull when it was launched. And it comes with this sort of, I don't know how well you can actually see this, but it's embossed with San Lorenzo, the name of the boat and the date of the launch and all that kind of stuff. That's absolutely fantastic. And the San Lorenzo book that comes with it as well. It's just neat little touches. If we head on forward, there is a pocket door here that slides across. This brings us into the lobby area with the stairs that go down. Day heads is here as well. That's tucked away like so. Again, you've got choices of the sort of the stonework and all that kind of thing. Set it up as you wish how thick these doors are. Very much a San Lorenzo thing. And then we can come right on forward. It is a main deck owner's cabin. So from here forward, this is all the owner's domain. The stairs go down from here to the lower deck with all the guest cabins, which of course we'll show you in a moment. So in here, again, owner specification, they've gone for putting glass all the way around here to really lighten this area up. So these two areas kind of connect with each other um, obviously, the toilet itself is behind a frosted door for obvious reasons, like so. There we go. But yeah, that is the bathroom area. So there is a door that slides across, but it's a glass door. Again, owner spec, but that does 
really kind of lighten this area up. This is all wardrobes all the way down this side. So you've got the sliding doors, clothes are in there. And then we head on through a bit further and we've got this dressing area or desk area or use it how you wish. Also, obviously you've got the blinds down at the minute, but big windows in here. And you've got the window to the front as well and windows over here. So a lot of natural light into here. Feels a really big, spacious, comfortable cabin. And the other thing that we've got in here then is a doorway over here. So this is straight out on the side deck and there is a area at the front with seating and so on. Obviously we'll show you that when we get a bit further through the tour, but I'll show you where this door is from the outside when we go around. But it means that that can become like a private terrace with this cabin. All the light switches here, a lot more storage all along in places like this, actually AV equipment in there. And in fact, the TV is built in behind this mirror. So that is the owner's cabin. Let's press on a bit further. I'll take you down to the lower deck. We're going to everything on this boat. We're going to look at the crew areas, we're looking at the engines, looking at the garage, we're looking at the lot. So let's head on down and show you this bit. So there are four cabins down here. I think I'm right in saying, check the website to be sure, but I'm pretty certain you can have a three cabin layout with a larger uh, VIP cabin. But this is four cabin, this is the normal standard layout. And they are decent sized cabins as you'd expect on a yacht of this size. Big hole windows as well, so a great view out. We've got the blind down at the moment, but you get the idea. Um, wardrobes are over on this side, like so, all illuminated of course. We've got storage about the place. And then the ensuite for this one, just to mention that again, the TV is in behind the mirror. Ensuite is over on this side. Beautifully done. Look at that. And then the shower. Look at the way the shower is lit underneath the little seat in there. It just feels so nice. It really does. And then we've got obviously the toilet in behind there. If we cross over the boat, this one then is laid out to a pair of very generous single beds. They're very wide, but also there's a Pullman berth in here. So this one will drop down. So brilliant, you've got kids, they're bringing friends, you want a bit more capacity, well then you've got it with that. And then around here, again, with the big wardrobes. And again, as you'd expect, all of these cabins are en suite. There we go, and the shower is tucked away in there. <laughs> he says, hang on. Yeah, there it is. Fantastic. And a toilet in behind. Thusly. Okay, let's go a bit further. TV again in behind the mirror on this bulkhead. This one here, I think I'm right in saying that that's a central vacuum system, so I think There'll be plug points where you can plug in the vacuum hose to different areas and have that as a central vacuum. If we head on back down here, two more cabins. These actually, I think, are a little bit larger. Yeah, I would say they are. These are a really good size. Again, storage along here, again, your dressing area, and then the ensuite is back behind here. Pocket door on this one, so if you want to close this off, you can do that just slides across like so and there's another one on the other side toilet in behind here with the frosted door sink shower and then that's all wardrobes across down on that side and again with the big hole windows fantastic one more that's over here i'm going to mention these ipad controllers in all the cabins what these do lift that one up it actually uh, is the control system for this cabin whether I can hold this and hold the GoPro let's have a go here we go so you can go into all the various facilities on here um, this one's actually called green cabin I don't know whether I must admit I've not really played with this but it does actually when you first open it up it comes up with like a welcome screen I wonder if I can get to that there we go and, um, and it gives you various options of, of controlling. So you can go into um, your Netflix or whatever else um, and control everything from there. You can even watch YouTube on it. 
<laughs> what a coincidence. Sliding door again here, toilet here, shower here. But yeah, these are all really good sized cabins. This is the size of boat that ought to be no compromise. And I think it's fair to say that that is true of this one. Let's come on around. I'm going to show you the galley now, because that is on the main deck. I'm going to show you the crew area, because that is off the galley. And then we will head up to the pilot house and out onto the decks. So come back out through here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Worth mentioning that this section of bulkhead here will power down when you're at rest, so that these become windows right down to here so the view out is just fantastic and then when the boat's running you bring that back up and it means you've got a perfectly smooth line on the outside of the boat love these lights okay let's press on over here is more of the crockery and also the glassware is in there as well again it's all secured so that everything is safe when the boat is running and if we come forward here We've got a side access door here, so that is straight out to the side deck. I'll show you that when we go around the outside. And then we've got the galley forward. There's a pocket door here that slides across. Huge refrigeration on this side. We've got, obviously, sort of like a pantry area, spare storage, call them what you will. Ah. <laughs> if you open it from the right side, it's much easier. There we go. And then this is the galley. Love this big window in here. Nice place to work. Usual accoutrements, dishwasher. We've got the Miele cooking equipment over here. <laughs> Sink, as you've probably worked out for yourself. Got the extractor fan down underneath. All the usual kind of stuff that you would expect. And then this has the crew quarters leading off from here. So if we come down here, what we will find is a very nice little mess area. Laundry facilities are in here as well. We've got TV in here, but also there's a Rain Marine screen, so that's a multifunction display. Um, so you can see navigation, all that kind of stuff from down here. Also control system from the boat. You've got another repeater for that here as well, which is very useful. Fridges down here as well. And then there are three cabins. This is the captain's cabin, so it's got a single bed in and Just checking. <laughs> I have been caught out before, as you'll know if you watch this channel. Um, yeah, separate shower, uh, ensuite, toilet, obviously, and there's storage and there's hanging locker in behind here. I'm not going to go in there because I think this is actually in use. Um, and if we go on forward, there's two more up here. What's nice is that all of these cabins are ensuite, so you've got two berths in this one and the ensuite, and each ensuite has the shower area like so. And if we cross over, Similar deal here, two cabins and the ensuite and the separate shower. That's in there. There we go. Okay, let's back out of here. Still a lot more areas to show you on here, but that is a nice crew area, isn't it? Like that. The windows in here, a bit of natural light, can open those with a bit of ventilation. Lovely. Okay, onwards and upwards, quite literally, because we're going to go up here and then we're going to go up to the pilot house and then up to the flybridge. Nice. Okay, steps here take us up to the raised pilot house. Obviously, with the raised pilot house, it means you get the full main deck uninterrupted all the way through. This is great. Look at these screens across here. They're kind of hovering in the air, Star Trek style. They're actually on this little sort of, I don't know what you call it, bracket here, and then that extends out. But they do look like they're just hovering there. It's fantastic. They look like they're flickering slightly, but they're not in real life. That's just because of the GoPro. Um, what have we got here? Engine controls, obviously. We've got bow and stern thrusters on here. Um, ship's wheel. We've got more navigation screen here, so the Raymarine just there, uh, engine controls, engine instrumentation, all that kind of stuff is all right there. We've got the windscreen covers on at the minute, which is why the view out is a bit opaque. But uh, obviously when you're running, you take those off. This is interesting. You'll notice you've got white lights about the place, but also red lights 
And the idea of the red lights is they don't spoil your night vision, so you can have a glow of red in here, see everything, but it doesn't stop you looking out. Big compass here as well, of course. Bit of seating up around here. These are the smoke detector and the gas detector systems for the whole boat. They're controlled from there. And then you'll see we've got some steps here. There are two ways up to this flybridge. Three, in fact, actually, because, uh, well, I'll explain as we go around. There's a door here that slides across. And then there is an upper helm position here with one of these beautiful San Lorenzo wheels. I love these, they're so tactile. And then again, repeaters for engine controls, VHF radio, the multifunction displays. You can see we've got a camera displaying on this one, so it's showing the view on the back of the boat. Autopilot, all the kind of stuff you'd expect. And then a terrific view out from here. Now, I mentioned that this boat's laid out very much for relaxing and entertaining, which is why it's got this huge bar area here. Normally, up on the flybridge, you'd have a big dining area. This owner has chosen not to do that. He's got the bar. We've got the very comfortable seating. We've got lots of sunbathing out the back. But of course, owner specification. So you spec this how you want it. And this is what this owner wanted. This is the route up from the aft cockpit. So you can come directly up to here from this is where we came onto the boat. And if you come right to the back, we've got this lovely sunbathing area across the back. <laughs> That's the biggest pillow I've ever seen in my life. And that's the second biggest pillow I've seen in my life. That's a lovely zone. And then on top of the boat, then, we have got, obviously, the communications, the um, satellite domes, the radars, all of that. But notice how it's all colour-coded, everything. <laughs> it's really, really smart. Attention to detail on these is fantastic. OK, let's press on forward. I mentioned there were three ways onto here. So we've got the way that we came up from the pilot house, we've got the way up from the aft deck or the aft cockpit but there's also access here and if we go out of this one so the bar area here usual kind of stuff we've got um storage in that one we've got fridges in that one we've got ice maker in that one again all very owner specification that i suspect is a sink and i would suspect correctly but yeah this door here takes us out and forward so we can walk straight down onto that four deck area. This is the normal system with the uh, solid rails here, and then it breaks into the, uh, the wire rails. That's just for uh, an aesthetic reasons, to make that look a bit lighter as we get ahead of the windscreen. Um, some owners opt to have this solid rail all the way forward, so you don't have to have that. Again, choose what you like when you order the boat. Sunbathing up here. and then steps down onto this beautiful four-deck area. Now, this is what I was talking about. This can be like a private owner's terrace, and I'll show you where the door for that is in just a moment that we saw from the inside. But that is the window that is at the front of the owner's cabin. And these poles here, of course, are for a bimini that goes over here to give this some shade if you want it to. Very relaxing area here, all nicely raked right back. Lovely place to be when you're stern to berth because you're looking out over the front or if you're just cruising gently at low speed it's a wonderful place to sit and listen to the water rippling against the hull just fantastic we've got the twin anchor windlasses here up on the bow and then we can come right up to the very front here in fact we're going to stand on here and take a look back there we go that is a substantial boat isn't it just to give you an idea that is a San Lorenzo SX76 next to us, so that's a 76-footer. Um, and that, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying, is a Princess Y85. So you get an idea of the scale of this. It's a big boat. Fantastic. Let's head back down this side. So we've got a couple of steps down onto this side deck. Boat hooks positioned here, ready to go. And this is the door straight out of the owner's cabin. In fact, there's even a little gate there you can close across to make this even more private. And then the owner can come out of here and round and up onto their private terrace at the front in the morning, or whenever they want to, obviously. <laughs> it's your boat, you do what you like. Let's head on. This is really high here. This is, well, this is shoulder height. Look at this. It's a really secure boat to move around. 
and we'll come right on back. We've got the overhang here, of course. That's the doorway from the lobby area where the stairs were. You can see, in fact, just about the stairs up to the pilot house. And then these are those sliding doors in the saloon that open up to really open this area right out. And then we're back then to the cockpit. So, last thing to talk about is engines. Hey and they're accessed over here. I'm just going to show you as well, this is the stairway at the aft end of the flybridge. If I poke my head up there, in fact, you'll see. That's the bar area, and that's where we walk through to go down to the front. And that's the sunbathing at the back. OK, let's come back down here, because this door will give us access to the engine room. Here we go. And this then is the rather magnificent engine space. And what we find in here are a pair of MTU 16V M96s. They are 2,434 horsepower each. They're giving the boat just under 30 knots. I think it's about 28 flat out. And she'll cruise there for a 24 knots. So a fast planing boat. Range at that sort of speed, you're looking at probably just under 400 miles as ever. Drop the speed right back to the space and speeds and you'll probably triple that. You go an awful lot further when you're not pushing them up out of the water. But if you want the performance, well, it's got that and it's got it in spades. Look at this control panel. This is proper Star Trek, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Let's take a wander around the side here. Generator, top the, touch up there, there's two of those one on either side and if we look back here we've got things like the water maker back here if we come down the side here these are these power conversion units which means that when you plug into the marina wherever you are whatever the voltage whatever the phase it converts it to exactly what the boat needs so wherever you take it you have no problems in plugging in if it's not the right voltage if it's not the right phase it'll sort that out for you and I want to show you the garage, because that's down here as well. That's the other generator over in that corner over there. We've got camera in here as well, so this can be monitored from any of the multifunction displays. That's where we came in. We've got the master vault systems here. This is interesting, this is an intercom. A little workbench down here as well. If we come right back down here, this is one of these uh, Glendinning systems, I think they're called. Basically, it's the shore power cable. The shore power cable on these big boats are so thick and heavy and difficult for the crew to put out and take in. So what this is, is a powered system which actually powers it in. So you push a button and all you've got to do then is feed it in and it coils it into this drum. It makes life an awful lot easier for the crew. They're a really, really good feature. We're seeing those a lot on boats now and with good reason. Now, the garage, the reason it's got these sides here, and we saw those on the other side as well, is because if we go, let's back up a little bit further, if we go through this door here, now I have to confess that I did look for a light switch, and I'm sure there is one because I can see lights, but I couldn't find it. But nonetheless, you get a pretty good idea of the size of this. You can probably hear it echoing with space. You've got space in here for your tender. You've also got space in here for a jet ski as well. And don't forget, there's a high-low platform on this, so you could put another jet ski out the back if you wanted to and carry two of them. Now, that is a massive area. Look at that. Just remarkable. And I'm sure the light switch is somewhere really obvious. <laughs> but I couldn't find it. Anyway, I think we can see pretty well what that is all about. That is a nice, big, useful space. There we go. Let's close that one back over. Let's come back out and have a last longing look at these. Oh, it's just magnificent, isn't it? Absolutely superb. What else have we got here? Side power system. So this will be for um, bow and stern thrusters, um, possibly the anchors. I don't know for sure, but quite often the anchors in this size boat, the anchor windlasses are hydraulic. 
so that'll be the, the power for all of those. The generator, I think I pointed out, or one of them at least is over there. Awesome, let's press on. I think we've pretty much done it. So we'll come back out of here. And I think what we'll do is close that one up and just for the sake of completion, we'll come back up these steps. Back up onto the top. And we'll come back here to this fabulous area at the back. And I'm going to stand over here. This is a blue game over here. I think that's possibly a blue game 60. We have a tour of that on the channel as well. Well worth a look. They're an interesting boat. And that, my friends, is about the size of that. Massive thanks to San Lorenzo UK. They set up this tour. Huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. But let me know what you think of that one. I think they're a fabulous boat, and I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say about them in the comments. As ever, stay tuned. Lots more wonderful boats coming. If you've not subscribed, do me a favour, hit that button. It really helps to have you guys on board. Keeps you posted, new videos coming. And we look forward to catching on one of those real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.